Congratulations, you made it through 2020. If you need a quick review, let's check this out. Australia was on fire for the entire month of January, losing so much wildlife. The extremely sad death of the late great Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi. Donald Trump impeached by the House. COVID-19 becomes a global pandemic. Stock market crashes, creating massive unemployment. The global economy gets shut down. Zoom becomes bigger than 3M, Boeing, Starbucks, and General Motors. It's the largest crisis of social unrest and injustice since the civil rights movement. The stock market hits record highs. Biden beats Trump, gets more votes than Obama did, having the most votes of any American president-elect in U.S. history. Interest rates hit record lows. Operation War Speed brings the fastest vaccine through FDA approval and being distributed right now via an order of priority. And there's so much more I haven't included in this list. So if you're watching this video right now and you got a drink in your hand, man, cheers. You made it. Woo! So earlier this year, I did a video on the six months that shook the world. I think we need to update it with this video, talking about the 12 months, the one year that rocked the world. So when I'm thinking about this year, here are three overarching lessons I'm taking away from 2020 going into 2021 and for the rest of our lives. So here are three big overarching lessons I'm taking away from 2020 and taking into 2021 for the rest of my life. Number one, we all got exposed. Listen, this channel is called The Seven Figure Squad. I'm looking at life right now through the lens of an entrepreneur, somebody that has been dealing with finances as a single father, that has dealt with my career in the military, had to transition from one career to another. I'm looking at it from that lens. I'm looking at it from the lens of difficulties in my life and thinking about all the stuff that you and I have been through to get us to a point such as this. We all got exposed. Our careers got exposed. Our industries got exposed. Our decisions got exposed. When we're going through this process, we understand that fear sharpens listening. A lot more people this year were paying attention to their money, advice, guidance, wisdom more than any other time. And people are realizing that bad times sadly exposed bad habits. We realize what values and principles we stand for and whether or not we can stand on those financially, economically, whether or not to take care of our parents, our loved ones. I mean, look what happened to the stores. People are raiding the shelves for cleaning products, hand sanitizers, toilet paper, food. People were freaking out. We all got exposed. And we're thinking about our money, our finances, the first stimulus check. People cannot wait for the first stimulus check. Why? Because it got exposed. Businesses got exposed. And so when we're looking at our finances going into the future and we're seeing the leaks and we're seeing that the most important thing is income creation, income insurance, that cash proved itself one more time to be king. That if you got cash, you're sitting on cash, you saved in previous years, you saved the, and stacked that cash over a period of time, you were okay. But for the people that were living paycheck to paycheck, people that are living well beyond their means, I hate to say it, I had to remind you of it, but got exposed. We got exposed. It's your choice right now in 2020 what person you choose to be going forward. You can choose to say, okay, you know what? I went through some pain. I got exposed. I never, ever want my family to experience this ever again. And you're going to make some choices to improve. Or you're going to be in a position to always be reactive when it comes to your finances and your career and the obligations you make in your entire life. Because here's the saying, he or she that controls your income controls your life. Tough thing to say, but here's the thing about tough times. Tough times create strong leaders and strong leaders create good times. Your choice about what you wanna do. The second thing, overarching theme and lesson from 2020. Man, no matter what you're going through, man, I hope that you have an attitude of gratitude. What? What's to be grateful about for 2020? What's to be grateful about this pandemic? My son and I, we got COVID-19 in August of this year. And uh, I'll tell you this for an instant, 
I was in Dallas, Texas at the time. And for a moment there, I actually panicked. Yeah. I panicked for a minute. You know what? Because I was coughing. <coughs> I was coughing. <coughs> and the cough wouldn't come up. I couldn't spit it out. I freaked out. And I uh, took off to the emergency room. I said, listen, man, a, a few hours ago, you guys tested me COVID positive. And I come back now, check me into the ER room because I'm having a hard time breathing. So they checked me in to, to put some IV in me. After that, I was fine. Had a bad headache. Had a fever, obviously. But thank goodness, chugged some water, vitamin D, vitamin C boosted my immune system. Three days later, we passed through the symptoms. Now, for some of you, you didn't have that type of favorable outcome. And for some of you, you uh, sadly lost loved ones throughout this pandemic. Praying for you guys, it's not an easy type of situation. And, and uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that my son and I, my son got COVID. Same thing happened to him. He couldn't cough real, real good. He had a fever. After a while, though, he boosted the immune system. We quarantined. And three days later, we were fine. And with that being said, I'm grateful and thankful that we didn't have any heavier symptoms or heavier experience with COVID-19. When I'm looking through the situation, and you didn't lose somebody, you didn't lose your job, you're able to find work right now. Well, dang, God bless you. You've got favor going on in your life. Well, it might be an opportunity for you to bless somebody else. If you really feel grateful and thankful for what you've been through, now is the opportunity for you to step up and step out and say, listen, what can I do to help other people? Famous Democratic president one day named JFK, he said, don't ask what the country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I'm just hearing that right now. You know why? I'm freaking out. Because isn't that the opposite of what's being told in America today? That if you're really truly grateful and thankful about what your situation is, why aren't you doing more for your country? Why aren't you doing more for your community, your fellow citizens around you, outside of you, just your family and friends? Why aren't you doing more for strangers that are just people that uh, are friends that you just haven't met yet? So when you're looking at the situation and you're finding the little things to appreciate will give you the fuel to push through a tough time, a tough year, a tough month, a tough quarter. So having an attitude of gratitude, no matter what you do, I always say this to myself. It can always be worse. It can always be worse. You just went through a favorable condition. Somebody else is fa facing tragedy right now. We had a family tragedy in our, in our family. I shared it during one of our annual conventions, and I hold her picture very closely here in my, in my phone that reminds me how fragile life can be. Tragedy happens into our family. And so how you deal with that exposes character, exposes really what you're grateful and thankful for. And, and listen, my, my cousin went through the situation. To see her now, just to see her in, in enjoyment and embrace of life, knowing that God has a plan, and to see what she's doing with my, my sister who's raising funds for helping people through, through recovery from being rescued from human trafficking. That's what my sister does as a nonprofit. That's what she do, does for work is exposing and ending human trafficking and sexual slavery. I'm playing offense. Why? Because I'm grateful and I'm thinking, because I realize I can do something about it. And the same thing for you. You got to ask yourself, if you find yourself in a favorable position, you're alive, you got air in your lungs and you have another day to do something about it, what can you do to contribute to your fellow citizen, to your fellow community, to the people outside of those that you just love and care about, what can you do for other people to express this attitude of gratitude? I have a saying, it goes like this. Life gives to the givers, takes from the takers, and has a very accurate accounting system. So what do you want to be? Do you want to be a giver or do you want to be a taker? My third point, and this comes more from an economical and, and, and financial type of context. I hope that you realize that you need to pick a career that's both recession proof and pandemic proof. Let's take a look at this chart right quick. 22 million jobs were lost during the first two months of the pandemic, of which 12.3 million jobs have come back thus far. Still 10.7 million unemployed and even more businesses are shutting down. I mean, even they're considering that 157 million Americans that are considered the working class of the United States of America are still having very, very, very tough financial times. Not all of them. Obviously, we did a video on Black Friday that not everybody's having financial tough times, but there's a significant amount of people that are. And the question you got to ask yourself is if you've been laid off not once, but twice, three, four times, 
I mean, one time I got laid off and fired. Uh, one time I got laid off, another situation I got fired. I never liked that experience. When I'm looking at an industry for you, maybe this might be the year that you consider a career change. Let's take a look at this stat here. Employment change by industry, nine month net change. The hardest hit industry has been leisure and hospitality, education and healthcare services, professional and business services, manufacturing and retail. So if you had an opportunity to be a, a store manager, a gym manager, a restaurant manager, an employee thereof, leisure and hospitality. Uh, listen, our company, we host big events, large events, putting thousands of people in rooms every 90 days. Even we were shut down from doing that. And that's a lot of revenue that we were bringing to many businesses and cities and states all across the country of which we could not do. So when you're looking at this type of thing, attitude of gratitude, and also pick an industry that's not affected or less affected by the pandemic. Let's take a look back at this chart again. The, the industries that were least affected were mining and logging, financial activities like my industry, the insurance industry, transportation and warehousing, construction, and information in the wholesale trade. So consider a career of making a lateral move into that you can position yourself, the skills, the resume you might have, start pulling your feelers out and look for an industry that is not affected. Why? Why am I saying this? Am I saying that you need to give up your, your, your passion, your, your love, your years of, of being in the leisure and hospitality, education, perfect? No, I'm not saying that at all. But you might find a side gig or a side hustle or start at some form of side income source by participating in those industries. So in the extent that another pandemic happens and you are in these industries that were greatly affected, guess what? You got plan B. You got another income source. You got, you have another career. You can pivot. You can adjust. You can, you can expand that passion. You can expand that business. You can consider full time. We've had many people that we've coached and mentored uh, this year that came from multiple different careers, background, ethnic backgrounds, uh, uh, religious backgrounds to be successful in our field because it's one of the least affected careers in the marketplace. Matter of fact, we just recognized a pastor this morning during our coffee session that we host online via Zoom because he earned a $40,000 bonus last month, cumulative income for a pastor in Gulfport, Mississippi, making over $150,000 during the pandemic year. We had a part-time nurse, Karam, Karamdi Chahal. She's a, she's a full-time nurse, but part-time Insurance industry, she made $29,000 last month. Her contemporary, another nurse on the East Coast, going from West Coast to East Coast, uh, Jackie uh, Jackson, she's also a nurse, not wanting to continue to put her life at risk because she is going to the hospital and putting her health at risk, dealing with patients in the COVID-19 pandemic. She made $33,000 last, last month in business for herself. So these folks made pivots and adjustments to an industry that's not only recession-proof, not only pandemic-proof, but it's also been deemed an essential business, an essential industry, and most importantly, an essential career. Speaking of COVID, let's talk about the second stimulus check that just got approved. Starting next week, many of you, this, the recording of the video here is Christmas week, people can be expecting a check by next week. So many people can be expecting a check before New Year's Eve. I'm putting that in there right quick. Many people are expecting a check before New Year's Eve. Might be a little bit of a hint there what you should do with this check if you get it before New Year's Eve. Because historically speaking, what do people normally do during New Year's Eve? <laughs> okay. However, $900 billion relief, $20 billion for small business grants, $15 billion for live venue events. I love it. $284 billion, $284 billion going towards the Paycheck Protection Program. By the way, one of the things that we didn't do during the COVID-19, we didn't get in line to ask for the PPP grant slash loan. We didn't ask for that money. You know why? Because we stacked cash we prepared. We didn't lean on government. We didn't lean on United States taxpayers. You know why? Because we had this long conversation a long time ago about not depending on anybody, church, charity, government. We want to be able to stack cash. Not depending on a bank, we want to stack cash. We didn't need the PPP loan. That being said, People are expected, for those making um, less than $75,000, you look forward to a $600 check. I think married couple, $1,200. If you made less than $75,000 in 2019, you are not eligible if you made more than $99,000 last year. Uh, again, unemployment benefits extended to March 21st. Just for FYI, 
is considerably less than what the first stimulus check was. Let's put up this graph right quick. So as you see from this graph, that your money in the second round of stimulus check is half of what people got in the first round of stimulus check. I mean, this is only a $900 billion relief plan. So if you see on this chart, if you are a married couple, say with two kids, uh, compared to the first stimulus check, you got $3,400 maximum. And this time around, you have a $2,400 maximum. The question for yourself is now that you have an opportunity to catch up a little bit, what are you doing with this money? What are you doing with this money? Listen, um, quick farmer analogy. When the farmers harvested, right? They planted their seed in the springtime, they harvested in the fall. When they harvested, guess what they did? They took a little bit of their harvest, took some of the seed to reserve it to be planted next spring. They did not consume their entire harvest because if they consumed their entire harvest, they have nothing to plant in the spring to have another harvest the following year again in the fall. So think about your money as seed. You have the opportunity to plant seed into creating an income source so that for this time next year, you have something to harvest. Otherwise, you just bought into consumerism. You consumed every bit of this money. And I'm usually saying, well, Matt, I'm so far behind on my bills. I'm so far behind on that. I know it's inconvenient. And again, tough times create strong leaders and strong leaders create good times. But if you spend everything that you blow, back to point number one, you've been exposed. Are you going to change your habits? Because if you want new money, new opportunities in 2021, my friends, you have to expose yourself and create new financial habits to have new financial money coming your way in the year ahead. So my last thoughts here, I'm not a big fan of stimulus checks. And I, am, I know you guys are going to give me a lot of grief about me just saying that. But the moment you depend on somebody else for your income, the less control you give to yourself. He or she that controls your income is in control of the decisions you make in your life. Simple as that. The moment you are independent, the moment you start thinking for yourself, the moment you say, you know what? I don't want to depend on anybody else but me. Guess what? You start having a much better life because you take responsibility over everything that's going on in your life. And therefore, that feeling of self-responsibility, of life, liberty, in the pursuit, not the entitlement, but the pursuit of happiness, I tell you this, once you achieve that, it's a great feeling, and I hope that's a feeling that you get to experience in 2021 and the years ahead. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you watching this episode. Give me your thoughts, feedback, questions in the comment section below. We've been having this engaging conversation, which I really appreciate since the 1st of December in the series we've had called Vlogmas 2020. We're uploading a video every day from the 1st of December to the 24th of December something that the YouTube community is doing and I decided to jump in and participate and our subscriber base has exploded. You guys have commented, you guys have responded what type of content you wanna hear and I appreciate you for reaching out. I appreciate you jumping your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. So if you're watching this, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, please click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, until we meet again, I'm Money Smart Guy. Until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart and be money smart today.